I'd like to illustrate and define a probability matrix and I think that's fun because it allows us to use all three definitions of probability that are important and that is the joint probability is equal to the product of an unconditional probability multiplied by a conditional probability. <laughs> I'd like to build up the probability matrix in the lower panel by starting with assumptions given as conditional probabilities because sometimes we are given the conditional probabilities and we want to infer the joint probabilities. And this will allow us to specify all three terms that are really important to understanding the difference between them. That is the unconditional, the conditional, and the joint probability. So to do that, I've just assumed or pretended two different discrete random variables. Inflation is colored in blue here and denoted with I. And I'm saying that's a discrete random variable with only three possible outcomes, two, three, or four. So in percentages, but I'm using integers. Inflation can be two, three, or four percent. And then I have here, notice this label, that's the unconditional probability that inflation can be two, three, or four is respectively 30, 50, or 20 percent. And that's a probability, so these need to sum to 100% as they do. My other discrete random variable is unemployment, denoted with U, and generally colored in orange here, with also only three outcomes. Unemployment can be, the, be either 5, 7, or 9%. But here I'm showing conditional probabilities per the notation. 10% is the conditional probability that unemployment will be 5 in the event of inflation being third, uh, 2. So I can write this in the following way. I can say, uh, I'm going to, for the 10% specifically, the probability that unemployment equals 5, right here, conditional on or in the event of. And so it's that vertical bar here that immediately suggests this is a conditional probability. The probability unemployment is five, conditional on inflation equaling two is equal to 10%, right? And just as a given assumption. So that means that this row here, each of these conditional probabilities will sum to 100%. This row here, 16, 66, and 18, also sums to 100%. This row, this final row here, also sums to 100%. So now I have the conditional probabilities, then I'm just going to solve for the joint probabilities, and that allows me to use all three terms. So starting with the 3% right here, how do we, how could we solve for that? Well, we say that's the joint probability that inflation equals two jointly with unemployment equaling five. So I'm using the comma, that's, I'm used to that habit. But in the label here, I'm showing all three ways that you can actually see a joint probability. A lot of people like the set notation, the intersection symbol. That means a joint probability. But you can also just jam the variables together. I like the comma. So I have here a joint probability that I equals 2, U equals 5. And it's going to be the product of the unconditional probability that inflation equals 2 multiplied by the conditional probability that unemployment equals five and inflation equals two. And so notice that here is the unconditional probability that inflation equals two is 30%. It's right here, it was given to us, right? So I'm gonna put that, well, let's put that right here, 30%, I'll put it up here, 30% multiplied by the conditional probability that we already solved for, 10%. The product of those is 3%. And that is, I would I also want to focus on this because I'm using all three probability definitions. Here we've got 
joint probability is equal to the product of the unconditional probability, also called a marginal probability, and the conditional probability. So that's a simple formula we can rearrange for that. For example, we can solve for the conditional probability as a function of the joint divided by the unconditional. So given that I've done that for this cell, and you can see here that's the simple product here, unconditional multiplied by conditional gives me the joint. I can copy that across, and that means that the sum of this row will equal the 30%, right? The sum of the row up here had to equal 100% because these are conditional probabilities, but these are joint probabilities, so this row needs to equal the 30%. And I can copy this down, this row here, the sum of these values is 50%, and this row here, the sum of these values is 20%. So this is a matrix in here, this inside box of nine cells, three by three, each of which is joint probabilities. And so this is a probability matrix. I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna go back to a conditional and come take a round trip back to the joint probability matrix now just to finish it off with some margins here. But to get there, I'm going to just this time infer the conditional probability, not of U on, in the event of I, but I in the event of U. So that, that conditional probability can go both ways, right? And so, I achieved that by rearranging that same relationship that we just looked at. So, right, this 13.6 is, is the probability that I equals two, whoops, two, I'm gonna say conditional on vertical bar, U equals five, right, because I'm, I'm solving now for conditional probabilities, and so now I'm just rearranging that same formula as before, that conditional probability is equal to the joint probability that U equals five and I equals two, divided by the unconditional probability or marginal probability that U equals five. See how that's a rearrangement, conditional, equals joint divided by unconditional. So in that way, my 13.6 is 3%, the joint divided by 22%, the unconditional probability. How did I get the unconditional probability that the unemployment is 5%? Well, that's just the sum of this column here. Each of these is a joint probability, so the sum of this column here is the unconditional probability that U equals five. So I can take this conditional probability, I'm gonna and multiply that out, and now in this case, I'm representing conditional probabilities, then the sum of this column is 100%, the sum of this column is 100%, and the sum of this column is 100%. And so given that, I'm gonna come back one more time to the joint probabilities. And um, for example, that 3% is still the same value. We And we say that is the probability that I equals two Nope, whoop, let me do that again. The joint probability that I equals two and U equals five is equal to the unconditional probability that U equals five. And that's in this case, 22%. So I'll say 22% multiplied by the conditional probability that I equals two in the event of U equaling five. And so we already 
we already calculated here that that's 13.6. So 22% times 13.6% equals the 3%. And so similarly, each of these cells is a joint probability, itself the function of the, the product of, itself the product of an unconditional and a conditional probability. And so at the bottom then I have the matrix in the inside box here, uh, matrix three by three, nine cells, each of which is joint probabilities. So that is the probability matrix. And then typically we include here the marginals or unconditionals, right? So the sum of these three joint probabilities is 30%. That is the unconditional probability that inflation equals two. Here's the unconditional probability that inflation equals three and that inflation equals four. These three unconditional probabilities need to sum to 100%. Similarly, here we have a row of unconditional probabilities for employment. The sum of these three is 22%. The unconditional probability that employment is seven equals 46% and 30 and finally, that it equals nine is 32%. So therefore, the sum of these three unconditionals must be 100%. So if this is a valid probability matrix, the cells inside are joint probabilities. The outside the box here, we have a column of unconditional probabilities, and they need to sum to 100%, just like the cells inside the box need to sum to 100%. So we have joint, we have unconditional, aka marginal, and now uh, that only other term that we don't see right away on this probability matrix is the conditional probability, but we know how to do that. If we want a conditional probability, we would divide, for example, a joint probability by an unconditional probability. I hope that's helpful.